Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to talk about the very best 4 bay NAS you can buy of the year. We've been doing this series of videos every year for god knows how many years now. We talk about the very best of each category to help you decide at the end of the year, in this case 2023 and the start of 2024, what's the best NAS for your money. Maybe you're stepping away from cloud services, maybe you're upgrading an existing NAS, maybe you've been hearing for a long time about data on the cloud slightly being unsafe, you know what I mean? A little bit weird that day you've been deleted from and you're thinking about buying your own NAS. And a four bay NAS solution allows you to leverage the benefits of multiple drives for performance, read and write simultaneously, as well as the safety nets that can be afforded to you from things like redundant array of independent disk or RAID. So overall, when you're looking at four bay NAS solutions, there's a lot of things you've got to keep in mind. Number one, we're going to be looking at a lot of solutions, but it has to be said that the reason that these three, technically four, are the best four bay NAS solutions are because all of them are turnkey. All of them um, arrive with their own hardware and software combined. All of them arrive unpopulated, so you can pick and choose what drive you want to put inside they can also be partially populated as well allowing you to decide to put in two drives and then expand your storage pool they all have to support storage pool expansions as well as external expansions as well uh, they've also got to support up to two to three years of manufacturer's warranty minimum in some cases it can be more than that and there has to be cross-platform support as well for mac for windows for ios for android for linux ubuntu whatever it has to be able to migrate and share exchange data between all of those platforms simultaneously so what are our best four bay NAS of the year well before we talk about the top three i reckon we should talk about the honorable mention this is a solution that got very very close that or um got very very close to being in the top three but for one reason or another didn't quite make it in the case of this NAS, the tvs h474 i think you could probably work out why this thing Although it's a beast of a 4-bay and arguably one of the most powerful 4-bay NASs of any turnkey NAS solution in the market these days. Man alive, it's expensive. We're rocking at around 13 to 1400 nicker. This um, uh, 12th generation Intel Core powered system arriving, I believe, in the base level as a Pentium. I think there is an i3 version out there. It's a Gen 4 lane system there. It arrives with fantastic capabilities. The power under the bonnet is fantastic. And it arrives with full support of not only QTS, but QUTS. So in other words, ZFS file system stuff inside there. And all of the apps and services that are rolled in with QNAP's platform for more on that later on but it's the price it's such an expensive box and again 13 to 1400 nicker for a four bay you could get yourself a very well established six or an eight bay or even an early rack mount solution for that kind of money so as much as i like this system and it got pretty close to being in my top four bays i've got to say that price point is one of the main reasons it is not included but that's enough of the honorable mentions let's crack on with the real first entry on today's list The Nimbus Store 4 Gen 2. You didn't see that coming, did you? Nor did I. I mentioned this in other videos before. But Acer Store this year, in 2023, have had an absolute diamond encrusted year what with their flash door series and the nimbus store gen 2 series two systems that really push the boundaries about what users think they should be getting for their money in the turnkey now solution world and this system rocking out the gate of 550 to 599 again currency depending on where you are in the world you are getting so much for your money now one of the things that might make a lot of users think it's actually cheating to put this in the four uh, bay category is not only is there the four bays of traditional storage there, again, SATA three and a half inch and two and a half inch, but the top of the system underneath those vents, the Nimbus Store uh, 4 Gen 2 also has four M2 NVMEs. That means technically this is an eight bay system. You've got your cold storage and your, your warm slash hot. You can even choose to maybe use two for caching and use two for storage pools. Use all four in a storage pool in a RAID 5 storage pool for performance. Yes, it's a Gen 3 times one lane on each of them, which will throttle you to 1000 megs for each of them. But nevertheless, even when you combine in the RAID performance calculations to get a bit more extra oomph inside, this is still a great system that arrived with 2.5 GBE on the outside, which will throttle things a bit. There are support for two and a half, um, two and a half gig to USB adapters. There's also a US, um, so an HDMI 2.1B connection there on the rear as well. What I'm saying is, this system, even on the outset, has got so much going for it in four bay NAS circles. Then 
combine it with the Intel Celeron M5105 or M5095. There's three different variants of that CPU flying around that includes inside it a quad-core Intel Celeron integrated graphics processor with 4 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig, oh sorry, 16 gig I should say, of memory and the thing's got 10 gig USB throughout. This thing throws so much at you in terms of capability what you can get for your money and then it still arrives with adm software now full disclosure asus store software isn't as good as qnap it's not as good as Synology. it just isn't it doesn't have a lot of the ai processes and it's a smaller organization that focuses on a, a few applications the ones that they do have they do have a tendency to add more polish on but i will also add there's a lot of third-party applications in their app center both for the hdmi output portal stuff and the localized stuff as well that may put some users off this is a nas i would recommend on its hardware more than its software but as far as software goes not only can you utilize adm on this but you can go ahead and install TrueNAS on this if you choose. You can go ahead and choose Unraid on this if you choose. You can stick that stuff on this and get yourself a ready-made, off-the-shelf, good-to-go NAS solution that also supports the very popular open source software in the market. And, more importantly, we've got this directly from the horse's mouth. Um, Acer Store won't immediately turn down your warranty if you install a third-party software. As long as there's nothing wrong with the hardware, they are fully supportive of you using third-party OSs, which is an incredibly big deal when there are users out there that want to take advantage of the more customizable open-source software in the market, but don't really want to get silicon paste under their fingernails, you know? And for the second year on the trot, the QNAP TS464. This was in my top four bay NAS last year and it is in a lot of my best of lists for a damn fine reason. This is very comparable to that Acer store that we just discussed in terms of hardware indeed. I'm going to pop that there on the side of the table because we're going to need that later. Now the QNAP here arriving on the Intel Celeron N5105 processor also arriving with 4 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 16 gig. The system also arrives with two internal M.2 NVMe slots. I know that has four get more on that in a moment on top of that this system also arrives with a couple of 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports that are on the rear the hdmi 2.1 there the usb 3.2 gen 2 10 gig usb connectivity a lot of similarity right we've got a lot in common these two systems why exactly is this system rocking the gate at 6 to 650 where does the extra under nicker that this is costing more than that go well this system arrives not only with everything we've just discussed, but it also supports, on those M2 NVMEs, the use of NPU upgrades. It can support the use of the uh, Coral card, the TPU, and allow you to take advantage of AI-related processes internally, which are getting better all the time. Even if you don't install uh, an AI upgrade M2 or a USB upgrade M2 uh, AI upgrade, what you can still take advantage of is the base level hardware and take advantage of AI processes in surveillance for facial recognition, in searching the files and folders within the system with QSearch, utilized in QMAGI for AI powered photo uh, face and object recognition. Then you've got the fact that their QBR software, which is definitely better than the surveillance software, uh, surveillance center um that arrives with acer store this one qbr pro is much better and you get eight camera licenses included what i've not even touched on is up here this system has a pcie upgrade slot that means that not only have you got all of that base level hardware i just discussed but you can stick in a 10 gbe upgrade hell stick in an m2 nvme upgrade for more m2 bays hell Stick in a QM2 card like this one, which knocks around for about 100 to 200 nicker, depending on which generation you go for. And this will allow you to add 10 GBE and two M.2 NVMe SSD bays inside, which can be used for that uh, uh, MPU AI upgrade card. It can be used for SSDs for caching, so you can go ahead and install yourself some SSDs, get some faster active caching, create some storage pools. Again, so now you've got those four M2 NVMe slots we mentioned, but... On top of that, you can take advantage of Q-Tier. Q-Tier is unique to QNAP over any other brand. It allows you to create a truly tiered storage system. What does that mean? Well, 
with caching, when you utilize read and write caching on a NAS, which by the way, caching is supported by all of the NAS brands, caching, uh, when it comes to write caching, is when data is being written to the NAS, it writes to the SSD, and then in the background, during moments of idle or inactivity, the system copies the data in quieter moments to the larger, slower hard drive storage array. When it comes to read caching, uh, micro data, small metadata, not the big ones, but very small IO data is copied over to the SSDs once the system recognizes it was being more commonly requested there and it makes a copy of it. Now Qtier takes a lot of all of that logic I've just mentioned and scales it and puts it together. Qtier takes the hard drive storage array, the SSD storage array and combines it into a single storage pool. That single storage pool made up of hard drives and SSDs is then with internally in the system taking advantage of write caching, sure, but when it comes to read caching, instead of copying data in small amounts to the SSD, it will actively move the most frequently requested data over to the SSDs because it knows that that is warm or hot data. QTIA allows one storage pool made up of hard drives and SSDs to have different areas of speedy media inside from slow to high and then the system learns as you access data what data needs to live where and once you combine that with the QM2 upgrades, the ability to add not only 2.5 GBE upgrades, but also the option to add 5 GBE upgrades on USB, means that this 4-bay has a huge potential for scaling its performance. However, we have to add at the end that one, QNAP and indeed Asus Dot and indeed Terramaster were all impacted by Deadbolt uh, back in early 2022. And although all of the brands have implemented changes to their security in that time, it has to be said that when it comes to their software platform, QTS and QUTS for that matter, although it's more fully featured than any of the others out there with some great tools under its belt, it is worth highlighting. So when it comes to security, a lot of users do still have question marks about remote access on these systems and it would be remiss of me not to at least address those. And the other thing worth highlighting about this system is the fact that right now it the memory on the base level model does change a lot because there went through a period of memory shortages that affected the bulk of the industry where a lot of systems rather than arriving with removable soldered memory they went with soldered larger amounts of memory in order to keep things cost efficient but also because of the lack of NAND and DRAM that was flying around for memory that flash consequently some retailers list this device with a default 8 gig of memory. Do look at those systems because the 8 gig of memory may be soldered to the board and you can't add more memory. Try to get the device that's got 4 gig of memory and then that has a sodium slot that allows you to upgrade the memory higher. But with the exception of those two facts, it has to be said that when it comes to 4-bay NAS devices, the 464 from QNAP is still an absolute don. They were always going to make the cut. Synology and their four bay NAS solutions, they've been in the NAS market now for coming up on 24 to 25 years. And in that time, they have released a lot of four bays, but none, none of the four bays prior to this, the DS923 Plus, were ever as contentious. When Synology at the end of 2022 changed up their portfolio and removed or at least changed their place in the portfolio, the position of certain Intel integrated graphics systems in favor of embedded AMD systems like this one, it upset some users and although six months after there was the release of the DS423 Plus to address a lot of those users with an integrated graphics system, it didn't appease everyone with the slight age of its hardware. But in the year since its release, the DS923 Plus has grown a lot more fans about it. Notwithstanding that that price point between 500 and 550 NICA has become far more dynamic and there are price, point, uh, price savings to be made. But the capabilities of Sonority software DSM 7.2 and the all the added features that have arrived in 2023 all of them are, potent, are possible on this system. The R1600 dual core uh, four thread processor this system arrives with is a powerful CPU going up to 3.6 gigahertz when needed but moreover than that supporting ECC memory with the system having 4 gig of ECC memory included supporting up to potential 32 gig is very very unique in a 4-bay bringing 
arguably enterprise-ish level hardware in an arena that is generally considered prosumer and a bit home and small businessy. On top of that, you've got the M2 NVMe base with the DS923 being one of our only of around six or seven systems right now that support not only SSD caching, but of course, M2 NVMe storage pools, something that all the other brands I've talked about today support, but Synology only recently added to their platform, although you do have to use their SSDs if you want to use it. Now, on the rear of the system, we do still have one GBE, which is a bit disappointing, and I can understand a number of you wondering why the heck is this thing on the list? Well, the next two reasons. Number one, the fact that it can be upgraded to 10 GBE, something someone you had never, ever, ever engaged with on four base systems at any point in the whole of their 20 to 25 year history. Secondly, with this system, arriving with that 10 GBE upgrade, it meant that that CPU made a lot more sense in terms of the system's portfolio but also within the realms of what dsm is capable of and that's the other reason why this made the list because let's be honest stand with me together dsm is still the best now software in the market it just is it's the most user friendly it is the most polished it is arguably the one that's had the most r d spent on it and any synology solution you buy this or others the majority of that money that synology make goes into the software more than the hardware and although this thing cannot compete with any of the other NASs I've talked about today in terms of hardware, I would say right now in terms of software, it is a significant distance ahead. Notwithstanding the likes of Active Backup Suite, Synology Surveillance Station, um, their Virtual Machine Manager platform there, their Docker application there, their Synology Collaboration Suite of Drive, of Office, of Audio Station, Video Station, and um, all of those tools, features, and services that are included with this license free, enjoy them then you've got all of the apps and services available on ios and android and although qnap does give them a run for their money they've still got the most out there particularly when you go into home tv services amazon alexa google home they have got more apps on different client devices out there across the world than any other nas brand and notwithstanding the client applications you can install on your desktop uh, devices as well on top of that dsm has Probably, I think everyone would agree, in terms of NAS software, been the most secure platform in the market. They were the, one of the few brands not to be successfully targeted by the Deadbolt Ransomware Group. The last time Synology had anything close to a meaningful security issue was SinoLocker, and that was in 2013-14, perhaps. And I think Synology learned a lot from that, investing in Pwn to Own and their own bounty reward system for their own security. They are a brand that takes software incredibly seriously and if that's what's important to you the security and safety more than the hardware and you aren't just going to get a system to think about bunging on a third party os or that the nas was only going to sit there as a target drive for your own software if you are looking for a truly turnkey combined hardware hardware software solution right now in four bay the ds923 is one of the best if not the best in the market and there you go. Those are the best four bay NAS to buy of the year, the end of 2023 and the start of 2024. Are you still on the fence? Are you still unsure what solution you need for your home or business needs? Let me offer you some options. Number one, you've got the free advice, completely free option on the side of every page on NAS compares, the big blue button on the right hand side. You've also got Ed's NAS builder tool to help narrow down thousands upon thousands of solutions down to three or four. On top of that, head over to Ko-Fi or Patreon if you want to experience mediated support and of course you can hire me or eddie there on the commissions tab to have one-to-one -one zooms where we can arrange and consult on the best solution for your setup and again whether you're a home user or a business user alternatively use our discord or our ask nas compares community forum for more answers and more integration and help from other users in the nas community finally there are links in the description to not only reviews guides and performance tests on all of these systems but also there are links there for different retailers where you can pick up these devices and if you were going to go to those retailers anyway, why not use those links? Because if you do so, it results in a small fee coming back here to me and Eddie at NAS Compares. It's just both of us and it allows us to keep doing what we do. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic rest of 2023. Have a great Christmas, a fantastic new year, and I'll see you in 2024.